Howdy guys, Bookie Laura here. Now I know there's often a big debate about what's better, books versus films, and I think they both have their qualities and things that make them better than the other. Uh, but, but what I really wanted to think about in this video was the books which I have read because of the film. So I've seen the film first and that has inspired and motivated me to go and read the book. So this is a, a sort of list of, I think it's five, five books which I read because of the film. Before I go too much further, I want to just kind of apologise for whatever is happening here. Hopefully it's not too uh, apparent, but I have had a really bad cold. And whilst I'm on the mend, there are still, you know, my voice is very husky, still a bit blocked, and there is a whole bunch of red skin stuff going on. So probably the less said about that, the better. So I'm kind of doing these in a sort of reverse order. So I'm going to start, I'm going to end with the book which I, um, I loved and watched because the film was just mind-blowing. So we'll end there. We'll end on a high, hey? So the first one that I want to talk about is the first book that I remember reading because I watched the film and it was so good was The Beach by Alex Garland. I've included this first on the list because it's probably the longest one ago. I read this um, way back when the beach, the film The Beach came out and read the book. I remember really loving the film. I think it was at a time when Leonardo DiCaprio, oh gosh, I've just realised that he's in three of these. Anyway, when he was just up and coming and I was quite a sort of teenager and loving him and loving everything that he did. But I think the beach I really liked is that it was a really pretty film. It was the first time that I'd watched a film and been in awe of how, how beautiful it was and the sort of, what's the word, cinematography? Is that the right word? The sort of, yeah, all the camera angles and the shots and stuff and not just being interested in the plot. And I think that actually when I went and read the book that was all so clear from the book, but the film is amazing. Uh, because of that I read the book, which is the whole point of this video, so I don't really need to say it. Another book which I was totally inspired to read from the film was Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Uh, it's, it's fairly well known amongst people that know me that I am a massive Jurassic Park fan, massive dinosaur fan in general, but Jurassic Park, you know, I could pretty much quote every single line in the film. I absolutely adore it. And it has been my favourite for a really long time. I remember having read Jurassic Park when I was younger, uh, and but that was mostly motivated by the fact that I loved the film, and I have since gone on and read it again because I still love the film. I, it doesn't... For me, I think the film is something magical and the book can't compete with that. The book is great, I'm a big Michael Crichton fan, but the film is epic. Then, Leonardo DiCaprio's second mention on here is uh, the book Catch Me If You Can by Frank Abagnale. Now, I, again, I watched the film and loved it. I think I liked, I liked the kind of real life element of it and uh, the pacing is really good in the film, it moves really quickly and it's a really intriguing kind of, I always think a film is good when you come out of it thinking kind of like, oh, I could do that or not I could do because, you know, I'm not going to go around forging my way around the world. But when it, it ignites something in you, I suppose, and it made me really interested in the whole concept of forgery and that that kind of criminal and the kinds of things that he was getting up to and I went on to read some other ones similar about uh, counting cards that sort of thing uh, again the book was all right didn't compare to the film but that is unusual it was unusual the second place and my first and second are huge they're sort of the reason for doing this video so the second place book is I am legend which I think is by uh, Richard Matheson but anyway, I watched the film, the Will Smith film, and I think not so much the film itself, because the film is weird, but there are elements of it that I really liked, and the trailer for it and the advertising that was done beforehand was so, so well done, and it was such a beautiful film, and all that sort of New York shots of him being the only one there and stuff was mind-blowing, and I kind of went and thought, I'll read the book, and I bought it. It was a long, long time ago, actually, and I loved it. The book like I cannot put into words how much I loved it I always describe it as saying that in essence it's the same as the film like the concept is the same as the film but actually the kind of this this I don't know how to explain it but like the the thought behind it the point it was trying to make is not at all achieved in the film it it ends in a really really different place in quite a thought-provoking place and it's one that I would read again it's quite a quick read as well so I would definitely be inspired to read that again and I don't read read books so that's saying something so I love I enjoyed the film 
and therefore I read the book, and this is the first time I think that for me that the book surpassed the film, despite having seen it first. And then the grand finale on this list, a film that I absolutely adore and I could watch it a thousand times and not get bored, and then I went on to read the book, was uh, Shutter Island, which I now realise I don't know who wrote it. Was it Dennis Lehane? If it is, I'm keeping this in. If it's not, I'm just going to pretend I didn't remember to include the author. Anyway, Shutter Island. So I saw the film. It's one of those films that I love where as soon as the film finishes, you think, I've got to watch this again. I've got to figure out what's going on here. A bit like, you know, 12 Monkeys is similar, does a similar thing when it messes with your head. And I love films like that. So I think that then the only downside for me was then when I went and read the book, I knew where it was going. And if I'm honest, I think when I was reading the book, I was kind of just reliving my love for the film and not taking the book on its own. I really, really, really wish that I'd read the book first. But then I suppose that would have ruined the film, because then I would have known the, the ending. Anyway, so those are five books which I read after having seen the film. The film inspired me to go and read them. I would really be interested to know if there are any books that you have read because of the film, and whether or not they sort of exceeded your expectations or the other way around. I think on the whole, these, not all of them, but on the whole, the films for me were better. And I think often I'd be interested in doing a sort of different list, a films that I've read because of the book, and I tend to find that's the other way around. So I'd be interested to know, particularly for these films that I have included, if you read the book first, do you prefer the book? So is it kind of like a whichever one you do first you prefer, or is it that one is genuinely better than the other? Anyway, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.